So typically I like to space out these blind box blitz episodes a little bit more than this since we just did the one with Matt. And if you haven't gone to see that one, go check it out. I'm really proud of how that one came out. But uh, I've got some stuff I'm really curious to get into. And it's actually starting to pile up a little bit. So I have to kind of have to clear a few of these things out. Now before we get to the things you saw in the thumbnail, I will go ahead and start off with something that was actually thrown in with the camera boxes that I got for me and Matt. Uh, bl uh, blindboxes.com, yes I botched the name in the last video, but that's the website that deals nothing but blind boxes. Uh, throws in little gifts with their, uh, with their orders, and this is just something that happened to be in with mine. Rocket World, San Francisco, California, USA, www.rocketworld.org. Don't bother going to that website because it's under construction. And looking into the history of this thing, I'm pretty sure it's uh, been in construction for a long time and will never be finished. This was kind of an unfortunate situation where the IP creator was separated from the people who own the IP, which is a terrible thing to see, and I hate whenever that happens, Capcom. But yeah. Uh, for all the looking I did, I could not actually see, tell uh, what what was actually going to be inside this thing. There was a bunch of little figurines of animals with guns. I, I, I don't know. So we have but a scant few clues on the boxes. Some skull logos, little bear claw here. Death from above. Uh, intended for collectors, ages 14 and up. But we also have a, as Ashens would put it, not to three sad onions on this on the side so yeah i'm not sure who this is for i don't even know what this is going to be so if this is something horribly inappropriate for my pg youtube audience then you'll expect a very abrupt jump cut after i open this up so let's find out what is actually inside this little surprise box oh my god i can't believe they're allowed to sell that in the u.s Seriously, like that can't. No, no, I refuse to believe that was legal. No, actually, it was just this uh, little tiny bear, little tiny bear strapped in with a parachute on the back. And you'll note the strings because he's connected to an entire parachute with that bear claw logo emblazoned on the top. So yeah, this is one of those little toys you kind of throw in the air and just kind of watch him. Uh, very, very slowly descend down, or not so slowly because uh, I don't think the parachute's designed very well. And as you can see, he's tangled up pretty horribly. And this is the reason I kind of decided to go the jump cut route, just because I was trying to untangle him and failed. I do kind of like how it is molded to hold the strings like an actual parachute, but the execution here is a little bit messy. The toy itself is okay. I mean, for its size, it's quite tiny, but the detailing's all there and it's pretty well painted. Feels nice and solid, so, yeah. And I kind of like the teddy bear aesthetic. The one little fang gives it a little bit of a cute appearance. I don't know, this kind of weird juxtaposition of military chic and cute bear thing. Yeah, and I couldn't get this thing untangled to actually demonstrate properly, so that just kind of is a thing that has happened in this video. So let's get to something a little bit more topical, something a little bit more like what you saw in the thumbnail. Transformers Robots in Disguise, Tiny Titans, Series 3. I've been curious about these. This is another one of those Hasbro super cheap to produce so we can keep trademarks alive type toy lines. Uh, these are like one piece. Remember the like little robot heroes that came out that were two packed and were actually like really good and well molded and painted and unique? These are not. These are not those at all. But they kind of fall in a similar aesthetic vein. Series 3, and you'll notice... Absolutely nothing on the bags actually indicating what is inside. I'm not even sure the artwork is different from bag to bag. I, I would have to double check even that. So this is a little bit, uh, a little bit unfortunate. Because I, you know, you think like the first thing I'd like to see is like what was in the assortment. So a little bit underwhelming. Now, well, and of course I drop it on the floor because that's always a proud thing. So these came in, I got three of these by the way. So these came in from my buddy Chance, who's very nice, very generously sent in a bunch of things, this being some of them. And I will admit some stuff came in before these, but I kind of have to hurry and open these up because uh, one of them's already kind of escaping on me and something orange lies inside. 
So I'm gonna have to crack these open a little bit. The only one I remember is in series three is Twinferno, the little figurine of G1 uh, Double Cross, who you'll recall is one of my favorite G1 toys as mentioned on Random Review in the past. So that's, of these three, that's the only one I'm really hoping is inside any of these bags. So, all right, let's crack it open. Let's see who we got. Ooh, it's a tiny shockwave. And strangely enough, not the only shockwave I've ever owned in tiny little one-piece PVC form. Okay, so we get a collector's card, which shockingly is only slightly bent, and actually not too terrible card stock, so give credit for that. It's a unique styling. I think it's a rendering that's more in the uh, R.I.D. style, but yeah, that's uh, more aligned with the G1, right down to the right down to the pipe on the arm. That's nice. That's not bad. Oh, here we have the assortment on the card. So, Shockwave, Springload, Wreck Guard, Fracture, Repugnus, Wheeljack, Autobot Drift, Twin Fang, Fix It, Beast Wars Megatron, Filch. Unfortunate that Filch is the only Filch toy so far that I know of because that's a really, really cool design. Okay, so now we know who's in there. I still really want Twin Inferno. So, beyond that, yeah. So, let's actually look at the figure itself. Hmm. Okay, so the sculpting's okay. It does have kind of a kind of, kind of that robot heroes vibe to it. Weird action pose, pelvis first, as it were. He's got some he's got some nice molding. I can see the fingers are individually detailed and everything's clean. All the lines are crisp. We have the wire all the way to the forearm that's been molded in. We have a blast coming out of the muzzle of his handgun. I don't really know if I like it when they do this. They kind of did that on Strong Arm. It was one of the faults against what is otherwise a really nice R.I.D. toy. You know, as far as the paint department goes, I'd rather them have painted up the Decepticon symbol on the front. It's kind of just kind of muddled out in all of that lavender paint. I don't know. These are a little bit weird. Uh, Quality-wise, they're a little bit soft. So, like, n uh, nothing like... Nothing, nothing shocking. It's kind of like a PVC, and yeah, generally unoffensive. Like that's not a bad little shockwave. Uh, if you have some uh, acrylic paint lying around, which I do, this could definitely stand a touch up, which I might give it a little bit later. But yeah, that's not entirely terrible. So let's go ahead and quickly crack the other two open. This was one of the opened ones, which we have. Fix it. Okay, that's cool. I like fix it. So I have it. Oh dear God. What? Um. What? What? What, ha, what happened? Fix it. Are you okay? Are you okay? You okay? But you seem to. Are you in mid sneeze or are you like half horrified? Like it's one of those faces where like if I cover up this half, it's like. He looks rather pleasant, like he's doing okay. And then if I cover up this... Oh my god! You don't know what I've seen. That's a really weird face sculpt. Really weird. Okay, so uh, what can we discern from the little guy? Well, only his face is painted. That's really really disappointing here they didn't even paint up his weapon like they did shockwave i know shockwave doesn't have a lot of paint but at least they spread it out amongst two parts so he didn't look completely bare like this one also we didn't know how to actually get his wheels to work so we just kind of have this dirt clotting up around his wheels so he can have a base maybe that's why he looks so confused and all, all together is just strange. He can't figure out how to get out of the dirt. He's got this strange, like, bent positioning, too. Mm, I don't know. I'm not feeling this one, guys. Not really. Uh, oh, well. I've got the Legion fix it. That's pretty much all I need for him. All right, and number three. Hang up. Ooh, we got Drift. So let's see how Drift came out. He's got a lot of little parts to him with those blades. Okay, again, we've got cast in orange plastic, so I'm guessing some of these guys are gang molded. And a bit of a defensive stance, mid slash or about to slash, one or the other. Just make sure, yeah. 
That's it's kind of strange. Like these are bagged and they stand up just fine. Whereas the robot heroes figures I was collecting uh, came in bubble cars with bubbles holding them in place, and those were the ones with bent legs that couldn't stand up. All right, so again, like here we have, like look, he actually does have some paint, some black around the legs. If you look around, the chest has been painted black, and you also have his face, which has been painted, eyes and everything. So like this, okay. unfortunately, the pose here that they've chosen doesn't really show off a lot of that painted detail. That black really needs to be visible to break everything up. Yeah, I think I actually think it would have been better served if it was actually on the arms rather than the chest. But you see, this one actually does have uh, this does have some decent paint to it. Unlike, we'll fix it back there. Uh, I'm not a fan of these little wispy things coming off the blades because it takes away from the imagination of exactly what's going on here, and it does look a little bit confusing. Like he raised this, like he did he sweep this arm up to create this little whooshing thing and. Like, that's what's creating that direction, because that's not the way the blade is facing. And this blade is facing the right way as well, but it's, he's carrying an underarm. This is a strange pose, guys. I don't know. And those thin little parts uh, didn't survive being bagged very well. So he's quite bent up on the swords. Uh, again, the sculpting's okay, and again, it's soft plastic, you know, so it's very durable stuff. You give this to a little kid who just wants a little tiny version of Drift, and... Yeah, it's not going to see any kind of undue harm. Very durable little thing. So, it'll at least survive. But, I don't know. I'm not feeling the Tiny Titans, I think. Like, like I still want Twinferno just because, hey, it's Twinferno. But, for the most part, yeah, they're, uh, they're not as impressive as the Robot Heroes are. I might take some paint to them a little bit later just to doll them up and see what they can really do. But... Those are bags, and this is blind box blitz, so let me set them aside and we'll get to something that actually works as a blind box. We're back with Funko Science Fiction, this time Series 2. Now the first time we opened these things up, I got one of the ones I wanted the absolute least, so let's see how I do here. Yeah, but this is Series 2, right? You know, the assortment's quite a bit different now, so let's see who we got here. Well, uh, aside from the major ones that are very obvious here, we have some poor guy getting his day ruined by a face hugger. We have a Cylon in a very common 1 in 6 normal silver and a very rare 1 in 72 gold. We also have Kirk to match the Spock from Series 1. We have a Doc Brown to match the Marty from Series 1. We have a guy I don't know who I've just anchored up some sci-fi nerd out there. Locutus of Borg. Guy from Galaxy Quest, The Iron Giant, Lilo Dallas Multipass. And then we have the ones that are a little bit more obvious here. Uh, we have, of course, the Xenomorph up here. Godzilla, because who doesn't want a cute little Godzilla and very cartoonish aesthetic. And then we got the two that cover the gambit for me personally. Oh, and I completely forgot Neo because everyone forgets the Matrix these days. Um... Uh, the one I want the most, of course, is Voltron, which means he is one of the rarer ones at 1 in 36. Because, of course. And then we have one of the most common ones, which is Bender from Futurama. Uh, that's going to be the sticking point to this whole thing. I'm not a Futurama guy. Like I, I watched bits and pieces. I wasn't terribly interested. And Bender is one of those characters where you either love how much of a prick he is, or he's so good at being a prick that it comes off as abrasive and it's hard to get behind him. And I fall into the latter category. He was a bit much for me. So I'm not a bender guy. So there are some there's some minefields here. Don't know who that is, so don't care. Uh, don't care about the one. Don't care about Bender. Don't care about Lilu, really. But of course, like, Voltron's the big one. Iron Giant would be cool. Locutus would be cool. Oh, we want one of these big ones. All right, so doesn't feel too big, so let's get this thing cracked open. Get the cellophane off first. Yeah, off you go. This open. If I remember right, there's a trash bag inside to further blind you. Indeed, there is. 
All right, so we know which ones I want the most and which ones I want the least, so... Yeah, let's fair bet what's going to be in here. <laughs> and the streak continues. Lilu Dallas Multipass, indeed. In her uh, white stripes outfit from, from the earlier scenes in the movie. This is like, man, the... For some reason, the like for some reason, those eyes are just like super creepy without any kind of like pupils to them at all. Just that huge. It's like anime eyes that are completely blanked out. It's kind of weird, and a completely painted on mouth, as it were. Okay, so not a whole lot to look at, ironically enough, for the character and the outfit, because there's really not a whole lot going on here. Okay, so yeah, it's this the uh, the kind kind of like white. Uh, white strip thing that she had early in the movie. Um, hair. There's really not a whole lot of detail to her to talk about. The skin is oddly yellow on her. It's, it's a, it's a very strange color. Not really, uh, not really very human like, and going like my camera just really doesn't like it or the light is just setting it off the wrong way. She's kind of got a jaundice thing going on. So yeah, that's not a win. Unfortunately, uh, I know there's some Fifth Element fans out there who would love that. I am not too big on Fifth Element. But you know what? There's a Voltron in this series, and I am not going to be stopped there. We got a couple more. I bought these along with the Gameras, which means they came from BlindBox.com. Blindboxes.com. Let's not get the website wrong twice. I went ahead and removed the cellophane just to make this a little bit faster, but you can see it's still glued. I have not opened or peeked in these. However, I will tell you, this one is noticeably heavier. So we'll go ahead and get this one open and just see who this one turns out to be. You know, Lilo was kind of an uncommon at 1 in 12. So... Not too bad on luck. Didn't get one of the super common ones in that box. But let's see. Hey! We got a James T. Kirk. Now, okay, okay, again, we've got this weird... Okay, the flesh tone they're going for, at least the Caucasian flesh tone, I should point out. Not the best shade of paint they could have gone with, but... Okay, at least this one has a lot of detail I can talk about. So, again... It's the Funko vinyl stuff, and it's solid vinyl, so this is very firm, very durable, very stiff. It's like, it doesn't have any of the give that the Tiny Titans had. Kirk is not a happy guy. Get out of here. Focus on the actual thing that's like, you know, three inches from the camera, not the thing that's a foot away. It is the G1. It, G1. See, that's how I'm so used to calling original series. It's the original Star Trek series, so it's Kirk in his gold outfit. Yeah, this is the scene. This is the scene. Kirk versus Spock. The epic duel. If I had the one from season one, this would be very epic. <laughs> Movie over. He's looking good. Okay, I do like that they actually included the a yeah, little bit of battle damage. That's a nice little touch. And yeah, he's got a lot more color to him than Lilu does, so... Yeah, I think that works out much better. So, I'm quite happy with that. How's the accessory? Okay, that's in there nice and firm, too. Okay, so I was worried that might have been softened up. It has not. Very durable little guy. So, I'm I'm okay with that. I'm okay. Ooh, they even got a little striping on the sleeve. Little tiny touches of detail like that make me happy. So, okay, so Kirk, we're good with. Okay, that's, that's fine. Now... This one that is quite a bit heavier. I'm pretty sure this ain't in Bender. It's super heavy, guys, compared to the others. And there's only two big ones in this series, the Xenomorph and Godzilla. I'm willing to bet it's one or the other, because at this point, I don't think I got Voltron. But either of them would be cool. Godzilla is fairly rare in this series. Let's see. Yeah, that's a big solid thunk. Try not to feel around on it because I actually do want a little bit of the surprise. Xenomorph would be cool just because I've got the Predator now. Let's see. Oh, he even fell out on his feet. Oh, look at that! Go, go, Godzilla. Man, that's a cool one. 
Okay, so here's where I really think the Funko aesthetic works. It's a very cartoonish little take on Godzilla, the white out eyes. The white eyes really work on him for starters. That's cool. I really like that one. He's very scaly too. Like you can see like there's all kinds of little tiny spines all over him. I like that the spines on the back are all done up correctly too. That's a good touch. Man. Oh, Tokyo is toast. <laughs> yeah, I really, really like that. The big hands, the big feet, tail, all fully molded. Rock solid. Man. Okay, so we don't have a Voltron. And we have a Lilu over here. But we have a Godzilla. Oh, man, that just kind of makes everything better, doesn't it? Makes everything better better no need to paint him up so how'd we do okay so all right so kirk godzilla are wins and we have shockwave who i would call a win we have drift who doesn't know what what direction his swords are flying in lilu dallas without a multi-pass and super weird creepy expression fix it those are our fails. So I think we broke even on this blind box blitz, and I will accept that compared to some that we have had in the past. I still have, like, I don't know, a couple episodes worth stuffed away in a box somewhere, so I don't think it'll be too long before we see the next one. I want to do these a little bit more often. Who knows? I want one where, well, I just had one where everything came up roses, so I guess this is middling out a little bit. So, I don't know, maybe the karma's about to kick back and the next one's gonna suck. Tune in!